Yeah, uh, really looking forward to this weekend, our last regular season game and completing the 24 game NCHC schedule and uh, and also looking forward to senior night here with uh, some players that have been in our organization for four years here that went by pretty quickly and knowing it's a pretty emotional night, uh, but also knowing that uh, they'll be playing in the NCHC playoff pod uh, the week later. So uh, more to look forward to. A uh, couple things. Uh, I think first it goes to I think the the quality and the character uh, uh, of of each individual that makes up that whole class. They're very very close and tight group. Uh, they live together. Um, you know they went through some years here where you know they haven't had a taste of an NCAA regional and uh, and had some success uh, as far as uh, winning a couple of Penrose Cups, but. Uh, you know they want more, and I think that's that's pretty special. And everybody making a commitment to do that and sending a message to our whole team. So I think there's a lot of things that go into it, and it's nice to have that because you're right, Brad. I think uh, you know over the course of time here, uh, it's not too often that you keep a, a whole freshman class all the way through four years. Yeah, you know what, uh, just giving another guy an opportunity that's kind of put a really good body of work together over his career here that, you know, think that he can he can absorb more in his game. Uh, you know, he does all the right things and habits and details in, in the game that, that give him success. And, and now to try to give him a little bit more. And, you know, I think Mark is a guy that physically can handle it. You know, he's a strong body with strong hands that keeps himself in very good condition. So we're not worried about the... I guess the, the the ice time part of it, um, I think he can handle it. But you know, just trying to see if there's another element to Mark Sendon, and I think it's helped us uh, uh, a little bit on that unit. And you know, obviously putting Jasper, we miss Grant Mishmash out there, but putting Jasper on that downhill ta attack flank side of it, uh, you know, uh, he's done a really good job too. And and then putting Juddy Juddy Caulfield at net front, and um, I think those guys have worked well together. And, uh, and along with the two D men uh, with Sanderson and uh, JBD on that power play unit. So they're, they're playing well as a unit right now, but Mark just, uh, you know, grasping what he's given to him and taking as much as he can and, uh, and doing well. What do you guys do when uh, Miss Mash comes back? I mean, uh, both of your units seem to be clicking along pretty well, and he's one of your best goal scorers. Uh, what happens uh, when he comes back? Well, I'd rather have it that way of trying to think about uh, – uh, what we do than trying to grasp for straws and find guys to to be in that position. But I think it's one of those things we'll deal with it, we'll deal with that when that comes. And uh, you know maybe it's uh, you know finding another spot or maybe it's you know just trying to trying to get him in in some way. I, I think the biggest thing is getting him into a game and and letting him you know get comfortable in that game and then then going from there. Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's just uh, you know believing in himself and having confidence, and and uh, you know a guy that's kind of gotten better and better each year that he's been here, and uh, that's invested in his game on a daily basis. That's you know improving in the offensive side of it now. You know he was always a guy that defended well and and played with pace and you know protected pucks very well in the offensive zone. But now he's created the element of finishing plays, uh, creating plays and passing, making making plays, but also finishing plays. And, and that's a big deal. But I just, I just, I think there's an added confidence level. It's, you know, and we told him too, you know, doing video work with him and different things like that and just showing the level that he's been at lately. And that's the bar. And, you know, whenever you kind of set a bar for yourself on, on, on what you can do, then the challenge becomes of doing it every day and playing with con consistency at that level and, and, and demanding more from yourself to get there every day. And, uh, and he's done that. And, uh, and again, that's a challenge of going forward, of continuing to do that. Because, you know, in order for us to have success this year is we need guys like him, himself and Judd Caulfield and, and some, you know, some other guys stepping up. And they have. And, and, uh, and it's great to see. And, uh, and just making sure that you have that humble, humble even keel approach of trying to, trying to replicate and do that every single day. And, and they have. Uh, what did you think back to his time when he was here? What stood 
Well, yeah, that was, he was a special player. And, and, you know, I think he, he quietly and sneakily got to 1,000 games. Like, when you, when you think about it, you know, he just went on his business in the NHL and was, a, you know, a very vital part of New Jersey's success, uh, you know, over, over the last years of his career. And, uh, you know, he just goes about his business and does the work. And, you know, when he played for us here, you know, he was good. He was a good centerman, like a big, strong centerman. But, you know, he, again, just going back to Jasper, I think his game, uh, Travis's game uh, accelerated when he came to North Dakota and got better and better and better. And I can remember, you know, we had we had Zach Parise, we had uh, Drew Stafford, we had a lot of good players, high end players at the time. But you know, he was on our power play, but he was a big part of our penalty kill. And I remember we put him and Drew Stafford together on 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 the, as a tandem on the penalty kill. And, and those guys would, I think, he would they would scare the other team's power play because they'd get probably more chances on the kill than the other team would get on the power play just because of the way they played and. Uh, I just think it, you know, the way he just went about his business quietly and, and he didn't look for any recognition at all and he just went and did his business and that's what he's doing in the NHL. Like if you if you told me, if you asked me the other day how many games has Travis Zajac uh, played, I, I wouldn't have guessed a thousand. I would have said, yeah, probably a, quite a few, but that's pretty impressive. And, and, uh, and the way he's done that over the course of his career and, you know, I think he's got a lot more left in the tank at the NHL level. Is that what it was? Well, I remember. I remember that was the uh, the regional here uh, when Holy Cross of Minnesota played, and uh, I, I I could still remember on the penalty kill they might have had one shorthanded that night against Michigan when we played them. Yeah. 